listen to me Easter is not a ceremony no there is no power in the observance of the dates the real way to celebrate Easter is to become validators of that resurrection when you are a validator of that resurrection you are celebrating Easter every day not just one day yes of course it may be profitable to commemorate those times just to keep us in the knowledge that Christ did this and if that is our understanding that is fine but if it's just a blind Christian ritual then it will soon turn to idolatry because in itself it will not have any power the real power of Easter is that we obtain grace at this time to be validators of his resurrection by ensuring that from us and through us there will be a revelation of the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus the kingdom the power and the glory of Jesus revealed through the saints to be a blessing to the world is the true essence of Easter Acts chapter 4 and verse 33 I like us to read it together one to read and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace was upon them all it took more than celebration to give witness the Bible says with great power let hope let it rise darkness trembles in your holy light let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light this is the prophetic word for someone let hope rise darkness trembles in your holy light hear me God did not send us here to just be celebrators of an event. We have been given a mantle and a mandate from heaven that as far as you are alive, that this territory will not forget God by the abundance of the witness that your life provides. The Bible calls us validators. There is a claim that God brought Jesus to prove. And we are alive today, here and now, to be validators of those claims. When Jesus came in Luke chapter 4, he entered the temple and they gave him the scroll of Isaiah and he flipped to where it was written Isaiah 61. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me for he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captive and the recovery of sight to them that are bruised. The Bible says, when he was done, the eyes of all of them were fastened upon him. And they looked at him and he said, this scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And he looked through the congregation. The healing ministry, according to Luke's synoptic account, was one of the first validations. He saw a man with a withered hand and he said, stretch your hand. And that man stretched his hand no assumption no whether you were healed or not healed jesus for you he went to cana of galilee according to john chapter 2 the first miracle recorded according to john's synoptic account the bible says wine had finished but watch jesus he was right there in that occasion and he said don't worry there is something we can do the presence of the kingdom is here and let me show you the power and the glory that comes with this kingdom fill six vessels and fetch the water take it to the rulers we claim that we have the same spirit we pray in tongues and shout in tongues but the benefit the proof of that oneness is not there 
there's nothing wrong with our prayer and all of that is only that do you know why the world keeps looking at the christian faith as a nuisance to civilization because respectfully speaking we are full of activities energetic activities that demand our time money and investment but there is an evidence that the world is waiting for listen ladies and gentlemen God has not called us to be a continuation of this limitation the body of Christ has tried but we must step up the bar Easter is a reminder Easter is a wake up call he said awake thou that sleepest it is not just a time to eat chicken and turkey that's wonderful but beyond that you must go back and ask yourself am I a true validator or am I just a, 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 a person discussing Romans chapter 8 and verse 18 it says for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us 19 says for the earnest expectation of the creator waited for the manifestation of the sons of God verse 20 says for creation was made subject to vanity not willingly but by reason of him that subjected the same in hope 21 says because the creature itself shall also be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the glorious liberty of the saints hear me everyone who is listening to me here in Zaria all the overflows outside our global family there is a mandate and a mantle upon your life to be a validator Easter is not just a time to say wow we finished Easter now the next one is Christmas we keep recycling these rituals and they become burdensome rituals with no power they can even become hedonistic activities that end up most people reject Jesus during these festive periods because their lives are full of practices that are even anti-resurrection most times around these periods all people do is just to dance to eat and to drink and it's even those who don't know jesus that celebrate it most we look to yahweh yahweh our hope is yahweh yahweh we look to yahweh Ephesians 2:10, then we'll go to 3:10. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10, then we'll do 3 and verse 10. The Bible says, For we are his workmanship. Say amen. amen. Created in Christ Jesus. The same way a black a blacksmith would sit down and begin to fashion a farming tool because of the kind of work it will do. Are we together now? There was a time I was looking for a particular video and then I stumbled across this video where a very heavy steel materials are created that crush metals, cars and all of those things and you, you would watch them squeeze a car, squeeze anything at all. Just squeeze it like a piece of paper as it passes through. And I said, that's it. So the Bible says we are his workmanship. You were fashioned. The nature of your build tells you your assignment. The nature of your build. God took time to pour himself into you. The Bible says created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Which God had before ordained. So our good works is consistent with his predeterminate counsel. For ordained that we should walk in them. Give us chapter 3 and verse 10. To the intent 
what intent Paul said unto me I'm the least of all the saints but this grace was given to me to teach men the unsearchable riches of Christ to the intent that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the ecclesia the manifold wisdom of God there is a dimension of God's grace and power and kingdom and glory and wisdom that the world is waiting for listen to me it takes more than being an inventor to take the world i can tell you one area where the world is desperately crying for is dominion over time dominion over wicked spirits that afflict men this is trouble that both the rich, the poor, the educated, the uneducated, Africa and the West. The world has not been able to come up with a permanent solution of dominion over wicked spirits. It is the one thing that puts all of us in the same position, naturally speaking. The wealthy man is looking for solution for his health, his longevity and his life. The weak man is looking for the same thing. In Africa, we are crying. In Europe, we are crying. In America, we are crying. Because when it has to do with this one, the answer is not on earth. The answer only resides with he that is seated on the throne. Jesus walked upon the earth and demonstrated invincibility. These spirits cried. They begged him, begged him, don't cast us from here. And with one word he said go and that was it we sing all kinds of songs that implicate us what manner of man is Jesus we clap and we dance he made the blind to see and while we're saying it almost every case we're calling has the people represented there and we finish preaching and we say let's share the grace we organize all kinds of things miracle services healing services and I, I'm not downplaying it we're doing our best with what we know but I'm telling you, we need to raise the bar with all honesty and reintroduce the power of Jesus to the world again. They have a right to reject our Jesus until we can prove he's alive. Not say he's alive. Not sing he's alive. Not argue that he's alive. An evidence is the end of all arguments. The assignment of an evidence is that it comes as a token of truthfulness. When you go to the court of law, it is not your noise the judge is waiting for. They may listen to you patiently or impatiently, but when they get tired, they ask you, do you have your evidence? That is why arguing in the secular, you must come with statistics, facts, and figures. When you come and say, this one is happening, they say, prove it. Have you done a thorough research? Have you come up with statistics? So when we travel across the nations and with their people and say Jesus is Lord, they have a right to sit down and say, what do you mean he is Lord? Jesus is Lord. I need that Lord over the condition of my child. Watch Jesus. He meets a woman at Nain and says, I, it's, a, it's an expensive statement to say I am Lord. Bring that coffin down. And he lifts that dead body. He goes to meet Jarius' daughter and he was interrupted by the woman with the issue of blood by the time he's done with her Jairus's daughter is dead and he says no problem with me there's nothing like too late get out of the room talita kumi little girl i say unto you arise naman was a man who was leprous it was not a parable and the prophet casually without hoping it will work go and wash seven times and you will know there is a prophet in Israel. Today we call ourselves prophets and apostles. And thank God we are trying. But ah, in the name of Jesus and in the name of honesty, we need to draw this bar and stretch it wide enough. In, in, in the days of the Bible, if you were called a prophet, it was almost like you were God. When a donkey got missing, after three days, they said, let's not be fools looking around. There is a man we know not there is a place they stopped the issue of location they said there is a personality that embodies the possibilities of god this mysterious entity called samuel that his word does not fall to the ground whatever it is between him and god we do not know but we know that this is a human being and a half let's go and meet him and they were on their way watch this and true to their word as soon as they saw samuel the donkey started going home 
what kind of a wicked donkey is that that will allow his owners to suffer and then as soon as you meet a prophet the donkey was on his way going back home may God take us to these realms can you imagine that the New Testament was founded upon better promises and yet we are yet to touch and scratch that dimension there is something these men knew about God that we need to pray that God will import to our lives and our generation otherwise we will continue to mock the integrity and the potency of God's Word there are all kinds of movements editing the Bible down planes and God did not mean this because when you don't have proof for many years you have to create a theology to, to downplay what happened are we together the apostle was teaching and somebody died and he said sorry he went out raised the person brought the person back and the lecture continued Kai. oh let revival come again let it come again let it come whatever made us become this dead whatever made us celebrating spiritual mediocrity from place to place there is there is there is a high calling a high standard are we together Samuel looks at Saul and says let us go up and I will tell you what is in your heart is it not because the Lord has anointed you to be captain over his army and he said three things will happen to you because you met me number one the donkey that has been missing on your way back you will find out it has been discovered number two you will meet three men holding two loaf of bread they will salute you and give you which you should receive number three you will come to the garrison of the philistines he says and that when you come there the hand of the lord will come upon you the spirit of god will be upon you and you will prophesy look at the man elijah resting upon the mountain and they bring an army in bands of 50 look at how this guy suffered in military school and stood before a prophet and he downplayed their training with one shout from heaven fire came down and roasted all of them they brought another band again the third band begged they said we are military people but we're not stupid brothers and sisters nothing this powerful listen nothing this powerful should easily go out of fashion Christianity is fading away because the the wow factor the attracting factor in the faith work is dwindling and fading and what is left are just religious rituals and the celebrating of men as superstars and God is tired of that there needs to be a definite restoration of power the power of the Holy Spirit the power of the Holy Spirit. I'm not even talking of your ability to heal everything. Let's even say you just obtain the grace to heal cancer alone. That you can come up and say any other thing I've not caught the revelation. But if it is cancer, forward march. Let me tell you, you will weary yourself like Moses from morning till night. Because you will see a cue that unifies both rich and poor. Male and female. People will travel from every place and they will come. That they have learned that God is with you. Yeah. There are names there are titles there are legends and tales of strength but only a shoe will wait forever to his kingdom there will be no end hear me in the name of jesus if there is anyone here under the sound of my voice and it is part of your prophetic destiny to carry this healing anointing i stand right now and i stretch my hands wherever you are may that mantle begin to locate you now may that mantle begin to locate you now the mantle that grants you the grace to validate the death the burial and the resurrection of jesus obtain that grace now 
hear me hear me i can tell you the truth mantles do not leave the earth every mantle you see in the bible and every mantle you see in modern history is still hovering around the earth waiting for aligned vessels and god is crying in these days this is the sound of the spirit that easter should not just be a time of blind celebration but for 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 god's sake that someone's life can begin to cry maranatha come healing grace come healing grace come lord jesus come lord jesus dominion over wicked spirits that cut short the life of people and plague their bodies thank god for the little we are doing but for god's sake let's contend for higher levels he showed me a river he measured a thousand cubits it was to my feet a thousand cubits it was to my knees a thousand cubits it was to my loins and a thousand cubits an overflowing river a thousand cubits there are kings there are kingdoms there are mountains and there are thrones but only the true one we reign forever to his kingdom there be no end there are kings there are kings there are kingdoms As we draw the curtains on this powerful sermon by Apostle Joshua Selman, let the transformative truths shared resonate within your spirit. May the seed of wisdom, faith, and purpose take root, bringing forth abundant fruit in your life. Carry the light of revelation into your week, knowing that you are equipped for victorious living. Stay connected with the divine and continue to grow in the knowledge of God's love and grace until we gather again for another moment of spiritual enrichment. Go forth in confidence and may your journey be filled with divine favor. If you have any question, drop it on the comment section and we'll get back to you. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and share this video. God bless you.